welcome to TOS TV, your digital force for an African network. I am Uche Naoka and this is Africa Now. South Africa has received the first batch of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. The government said the vaccine will be stored at a secure location in Guateng province, then distributed to other provinces. The country's vaccination rollout is expected to begin soon. The country had received AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, but halted vaccination after doubts over its efficacy against the variant in South Africa. Zimbabwe says the coronavirus variant first discovered in neighboring South Africa now makes up more than 60% of cases within its borders. It is the first country outside of South Africa to report that the so-called 501.YV2 variant is the dominant strain. The announcement by Zimbabwe's government comes a day after a national lockdown was extended by two weeks. COVID-19 cases are on the decline, but the 4% fatality rate has authorities worried. Monday saw the delivery of 200,000 Sinopharm vaccines doses donated by China, with the rollout set to begin on Thursday. The Biden administration on Tuesday said everything possible must be done to stop Ebola outbreaks in the African nations of Guinea and Democratic Republic of Congo before they become large epidemics. We cannot afford to take our foot off the gas even as we battle COVID. We must ensure capacity and financing for health security worldwide, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said in a statement. National Secretary Advisor Jake Sullivan on Tuesday spoke with the ambassadors of Guinea and Congo as well as Guinea neighbors Sierra Leone and Liberia to convey U.S. willingness to help according to Psaki. Congo in Central Africa on Sunday confirmed four cases since September 7 and Guinea in West Africa had seven confirmed cases and three deaths. This is your digital first pan African network, TOS TV network. You are watching Africa Now. More stories from the African continent after the break. Do stay tuned. Thanks for staying tuned. Egypt is planning to reopen its embassy in Libya's capital for the first time in six years, according to Egyptian sources, a Libyan official marking a shift to a more conciliatory approach to Western Libya-based factions. The planned reopening, which is visiting Egyptian delegation discussed in Tripoli on Monday and Tuesday, coincides with a new interim government set to be formed in the latest UN brokered effort to unite rival camps in East and West Libya. During its visit to Tripoli, the Egyptian Egyptian delegation met the foreign and interior ministers of the outgoing government, which is aligned with military factions that fought Haftar, according to posts from the Libyan ministries. The visit discussed logistical arrangements for re-establishing Egypt's diplomatic presence in the coming period through its embassy in Tripoli and its consulate in the eastern city of Benghazi, an Egyptian diplomatic source said. Egypt closed its Tripoli embassy in 2014, the year when many foreign missions in the capital shut down during an intensified conflict that saw rival governments set up in Tripoli and in the east of Libya. Still on border matters, despite an outbreak of Ebola in Guinea, neighboring Sierra Leone will open its shared border, according to Sierra Leone's president, Julius Mada Bio. Bio, who was visiting Guinea's capital, Conakry, said that health measures would be put in place. The main official border crossing between the two countries will reopen on Thursday, four months after it was unilaterally shot by the Guinea government. At the time, President Alpha Conde, who was running in a controversial short term election, alleged of a plot to invade his country from Sierra Leone. According to a joint communique issued at the end of a meeting between the heads of state, a joint patrol of the two countries' armies will start early March, with the two leaders planning to visit the area later on in the same month. In politics, Ugandan opposition leader Robert Kiagunlangi, popularly known as Bobby Wine, wants the Chief Justice to rescue himself from hearing a petition challenging the re-election of President Yoweri Museveni. Bobby Wine accuses Justice Alfonso Owini Dolo of bias 
because of his close association to the president. The opposition politician also wants the two other Supreme Court judges to rescue themselves from the petition on similar grounds. He argues that the three cannot hear the petition without bias. The three judges have not responded to the accusations. This is your digital fast plan African Network TOS TV Network. You are watching Africa Now. Still ahead, business and sports. Welcome back. You are watching Africa Now. In business, experts in South Africa have suggested an increase of the sugar tax from its current 10% to 20% in order to improve health outcomes and support increased revenue collection. The proposal comes as Finance Minister Tito Mboweni is due to deliver the 2021 budget speech next week. Experts say a further increase in sugary beverages will not only result in a reduction in communicable disease like diabetes, it will also help support the country's growing tax collection shortfall. The government currently projects a 300 billion rand shortfall in revenue in this year's budget. However, experts say a significant shortfall in the region of 250 billion rand is still on the cards. They add that the government has lost out on sin tax collections due to the ban on alcohol and cigarette sale during the lockdown. The main remedy that the Ministry of Agriculture seeks now is to increase industrial intake of raw sugar cane from the country's outgrowers for processing and increasing sugar output. This is the final for the Ministry to issue sugar imports permit because next year we are expecting enough production of sugar to address the existing gap. Agricultural Minister Professor Adolf Menkeda said on Monday during his visit to the Kilombero Sugar Company, Morogoro region. Currently, the country imports between 40,000 and 50,000 tons of sugar annually to bridge the gap of the sugar demand. While the country suffers from the sugar deficits, the sugar cane growers struggle to get markets for their produce due to the low processing capacity of the sugar industries. An urgent appeal for $202.6 million was made on Tuesday by the UN Refugee Agency and partners to assist more than 315,000 Burundian refugees this year. Increased international support is crucial to ensure Burundian refugees receive meaningful protection and care in neighboring countries, said Clementine Nkweta Salami, the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Regional Director for the East, Horn of Africa and Great Lakes region. This year, the 2021 Burundi Regional Refugee Response Plan seeks critical support to provide food, shelter and education, as well as access to health care and water, which are especially needed for prevention and response measures related to the coronavirus pandemic. This year's appeal includes funding to step up voluntary, safe and dignified return for those who chose to repatriate and is complemented by a joint refugee return and reintegration plan which covers returnee receptions and monitoring along with reintegration support in Burundi. And in sports, defending champions Al Ahi scored all the goals in the second half as they saw off Sudanese champion Al Marek 3 0 at the Cairo International Stadium, Stadium on Tuesday to start their total CAF Champions League group stage campaign. After creating plenty of chances again after the break, Kafsha finally broke the deadlock for the Red Devils just before the hour mark with a header in the center of the box after a cross by Mohamed Hani. Mohamed Magdi Afsha, Walter Bawali and Mahmoud Karaba scored the goals as the home side moved top of the group ahead of Tanzanian champions Simba on goal difference. And that is Africa Now on your digital first pan African news network, TOS TV. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Do also follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Uchen Naoka. Bye for now.